The poop was on the third bit of his blessing. And he was looking right at me. And he had his <laughs> hand in the air like that. And as I woke up, I thought he was waving at me. So I stood up and went back. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, it was it was it was serious. Loved in England, loved in Ireland, a World Cup winning player, a manager who changed everything. Jack Charlton wasn't just a guy who brought Ireland to the first ever major tournaments. He was also the man who taught Irish people that they didn't have to take a step back. Not for anybody. Going into work with my dad that day, it was summer holidays and um, going into work with him in his garage and he took a half day, everybody else was given a half day and we went home. The streets were already crazy at the time, people out in their Ireland gear already are in the walk and stand roundabout and just that game where we beat Romania and the tension of it and just being there with my family for it, so amazing memories and he brought so many to Irish football fans. There must have been about 400 cousins all cramped around one tiny wee TV in the back of Donegal um, watching the football and all our mammies and daddies, aunties and uncles watching the match in the next room. Enya on repeat for some reason in the background, don't know who did that, but everybody was bawling their eyes out, happy tears, and it was all because of Big Jack, his Ireland team, and the miracles uh, that they performed. Eight minutes before half time, Ronnie Whelan scored that volley, um, Mick McCarthy long throw, and Whelan scored perhaps still the greatest goal ever scored by an Irish player, even if he shinned it. And, um, <laughs> And I went, I went running out to get my dad, who'd just gone out to get the thing, to call him back to see the goal. And I went running out into the street, and our next door neighbours were out on the road cleaning their car or doing something, which I always remember because nobody was out cleaning their car during an Ireland match in Italia 90. But they were out doing something. The street was, so there was people doing things. And I went running out, screaming, Dad, Dad, come back. And inside, my brother, was who Ireland had just gone. My brother was howling like a pig, like there was just a sound like ah! <laughs> And the neighbours looked. They thought something atrocious. There'd been some terrible scene as was happening. That something terrible had happened in our house because I was running out, going, "Dad, come back!" And there was this squealing from the from our house, like. And that was, and they were looking at it going, is everything okay? Is everything okay? And I couldn't speak because I was, you know, just Roddy Whelan. I remember 1991, uh, growing up in Leitrim, not exactly a hotbed of soccer, but waking up to the possibility after we'd won the 1990 World Cup. And we went on pilgrimage to Manor Hampton in the north of the county, where Jackie Charlton was given a special uh, appearance. I was probably appearing all over the country at the time. Anyway, we waited for six hours. I remember just waiting around to see the great man, and then he just didn't show up or didn't appear, as I recall. And I remember just getting back in the car and nobody being that upset. Like my dad, everybody was fine about the idea. He just didn't show up. We still loved him all the same. And I, if we beat England, I'm delighted. It doesn't say that I don't enjoy England's other games. No, I like to see England win other games, as long as they don't interfere with the Irish. Yeah. For a generation of young Irish football fans, Jack Charlton ruined football. <laughs> we'll never, ever see scenes like Italian 90 or USA 94, like we heard from our moms and dads, or we watched on VHS cassettes growing up. He changed Irish football forever made us believe, he made us think we could beat anyone in the world, and we did, on the odd day. Irish football will never see the likes of him again.
Jack Clarton's last game in charge, Ireland lost 2-0 to Holland and played poorly in Anfield. But despite playing poorly and having played poorly for a while, um, the team were still given a hero's reception with the Dutch fans wondering what the hell was going on. And then Jack Clarton comes out for a lap of honour at the end of it all and the Irish fans are still going wild. I suppose just show the respect the man was held in. You had Jack Charlton on the phone to the President of Ireland being congratulated for everything he'd done because Ireland had just been knocked out but after this incredible week. And in the other room you had the entire squad, Paul McGrath, Ronnie Whelan, Ray Houghton, John Aldridge, all of them chanting, there's only one Jackie Charlton, while an FAI blazer was waving furiously like shh. But it just, at that moment, it, uh, it symbolised everything about what, what had happened. He's got a fag in his hand, and he looked at me, he took a drag of his fag, big smile on his face, and he said, Andy. And I looked at him, he went, the Pope would have saved that. <laughs>